Mm-hmm. So going back to that um, that inconsistent recall, frustrating yeah. for everybody. And um, what we found is that it has to do with dominance. Like oh. what hand you're using to start mm-hmm. with, that's where we start with dominance is the hand. Mm-hmm. And what we found is some children that have been in a preschool situation, maybe they were switching back and forth from one oh, hand to the okay. next. Mm-hmm. And they were um, influenced to mm. be a certain hand. Right. Where the hand is really genetically right or left, hmm. if you if they're switching back and forth, which is totally um, typical for a young child, that's why putting right. them in preschool is not always a good idea mm-hmm. <laughs> because yeah. you know they're telling them to write things and stuff, and mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's well, when often curriculum is written. So that mm-hmm. it's it's easier to read when you'd write with your right hand. We don't think about these these things, but yes, if you're they're influenced at an earlier age, that's going to choose that for them. You're right. Yeah, exactly. And so that that's where you start with dominance. <clears throat> if there's some left-handed people in your family, so um, mm-hmm. aunts, uncles, cousins, basically first cousins, <clears throat> mm-hmm. grandparents, parents. If they're left-handed, there's a possibility that the child is genetically left-handed. Wow. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so you you kind of want to watch for that. Mm. Um, if you have a younger child, put everything at the midline so that they're not influenced by the location. Right. You know, if you're always mm-hmm. putting some the crayons on the right side, they're typically going to not reach across, but just pick it up with the Right. With uh, the right hand. Uh-huh. So um, writing utensils, cups, you know, anything that mm. even Legos, if you put them in, at the midline, you can start mm. to see uh, which hand is is genetically uh, supposed to be uh, correct. Yeah. So um, if the child is mixed handed, that's an indication that those lower levels of the brain are not organized to the point to let the that dominance come out. Hmm. <clears throat> so that's why we do a lot of the lower level um, organization that hmm. happens more when you're um, a much younger child. And hmm. that, again, builds those pathways that we were talking about to begin right. with. Hmm. And then... Um, after you d- determine the hand dominance, which sometimes um, you need some help with that, you know, from, mm-hmm. from a professional, especially if they're older. I mean, yeah, I, had a fit, I was going to ask uh, about that. What do you do if they've already kind of been forced and mm-hmm. then the struggle is there? <laughs> right, right. Well, just an example uh, from from what the work I've done. The uh, I had a 15-year-old one time. Hmm. that came to me he was just had been struggled all his life with learning Hmm. and we found out he was really supposed to be left-handed and he was one of those that was Hmm. told early you know no it's easier you know to be right-handed well it's only easier if you're genetically (laughs) supposed to be (laughs) right-handed exactly (laughs) so we actually switched his hand at 15 Hmm. Yes, it, it's uh, it's obviously easier when they're younger. Yes, but lots uh, of retraining, I suppose. <laughs> yes, but it was amazing what happened with him. He hmm. just took off in learning, and wow. that took care of most of his learning challenges. It was pretty incredible. Yeah. Huh. <clears throat> so influencing the hand is real important. Not to do that hmm. <clears throat> as they're little. And then going through those developmental steps so that true dominance can come out. Mm. Um, that's like a neurodevelopmentalist can help with that. And okay. and the the um, great thing about um, the internet and the the technology we have now mm-hmm. is we can do virtual kinds of work. Yes, um, I'm I'm even working with a, a group in Uganda wow. uh, right now virtually mm. to uh, help 
because certain cultures, again, they do certain things that Mm -hmm. um, discourage development. And Hmm. when you when you get that um, back, it it can be um, very wonderful, the results. Mm -hmm. So after um, that uh, hand dominance is established, you can look at the eye and the ear. So mm. to, to help orient you there, your um, one side of your brain is, uh, controls the opposite side of your body. Mm-hmm. So your right hemisphere is going to control your left and your left hemisphere is going to control your right. Mm. So think of it this way. If you are um, right-handed, your file cabinet um, that you look for things in is going to be on the left. Okay. And if you're left eyed and putting information on the other side, Mm. it's going to be a whole lot harder to find. Right. Yeah. So uh, the analogy I have there is like if you had a filing cabinet and you put a picture of a giraffe in the second drawer of the filing cabinet, Mm -hmm. and it was a really long filing cabinet. Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) 